Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video. And in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you the three things that you are looking for in dream social media marketing clients. This is gonna be of huge value for your lead sourcing, for your prospecting, for your sales, for your outreach, and for your social media marketing agency as a whole. Because it's quite sad uh, to see, at least for me, to see so many agency owners spend so much time on outreach, on sales, on lead sourcing, prospecting, right? They're putting all this time into their outreach and into trying to sign clients, but the problem comes when they're reaching out to the wrong people. And if you're reaching out to the wrong people, it's gonna be very hard for you to sign social media clients. And so they're wasting all this time and energy on people that are just not a good fit for their agency. And so I really don't want this to happen to you guys. And that is why I wanna put this video together because I wish I had watched this video when I started out. It would honestly have saved me so much time when it came to running my agency and scaling my agency and signing more clients. So really excited for this and let's get right into it. The first thing that you want to watch out for is deliverability. Okay, quite a quite a big word, uh, but basically you want to make sure that before you start contacting a person, you reach out to number one, the decision maker, and you have a way to contact them. You have a way to get in front of them that's not going to be incredibly saturated, where they are actually going to be very receptive. Okay, because sure you can find the decision maker, but if you're not reaching out to them where they're most receptive, it's going to be very hard for you to actually get an answer from uh, from them. Right, so. Just to give you an idea, let's just say that you are reaching out to uh, Kylie Cosmetics, okay? Uh, and this is an extreme example, by the way, but you fi- you realize that Kylie Jenner is the founder, the, the, the owner of the brand, and you decide to reach out to uh, Kylie on Instagram, right? It is, it's gonna be incredibly hard to get in front of Kylie uh, on Instagram, right? Because she gets thousands and thousands of DMs a second on Instagram, right? But if, for example, uh, I mean, obviously Kylie Jenner is a, a bit of an extreme example. I'm, I'm shooting myself in the foot here, but uh, let's just say that you, I don't know, find her LinkedIn, right? And you reach out to her on LinkedIn or you find her, um, I don't know, her number, right? Her phone number and, and you call her up she's probably not getting that many calls because quite frankly, not many people have her number, right? So your message, your pitch is gonna be very receptive there on that platform, on that context, right? Same thing applies for all business owners. If for example, you're reaching out to the CEO of a large corporation of a large uh, e-commerce brand, for example, uh, they probably get a lot of emails, okay? And their inbox is not only flooded by things that actually uh, are important to their brand, but also people you know, trying to reach out to, to them and sell them on something, right? And so they're not gonna be re- very receptive there. Uh, in fact, they might have built huge walls around any sort of you know pitch uh, from uh, you know service providers. You reach out to those people, or if you connect with them on LinkedIn, right? And you connect there, right? You can still reach out to them on email, but then you can let them know on LinkedIn that you send them an email, right? And kind of, you know, you have that, you have that really good combination um, and you're really getting in front of them, right? And so that's what I would urge you guys to keep in mind, the fact that you need to get in front of them in a platform where they're most receptive and you need to make sure that you can do that before you actually start a conversation. The other thing that I want you guys to keep in mind when it comes to deliverability is the fact that I would recommend that you guys warm the connection up, the interaction up before engaging further uh, with, for example, a video audit. That way there's not a huge sunk cost to a video audit where you know they might watch it, they might not, who knows, right? If you have warmed up that interaction, then it's gonna be much easier to sell them. And just to give you guys an idea as an example, uh, in my case, right, and especially as I've started to build my personal brand, you don't have to build a personal brand, by the way, you absolutely don't. In fact, I would probably argue that it's better that you don't um, because that, then you have way more time to put it actually into, into your agency, which is absolutely vital, especially when you're starting out. Um, but just to give you guys an idea, right? Uh, what I do with my personal brand is I will offer them something of value, right? Or I will just connect with them uh, if they're in the same space. I will start just a casual conversation with them. Then I will warm up the interaction and then I will scale things up uh, maybe with a video audit or, or something that, that is much more of value to them. And so the sale is much smoother. Uh, and so that's kind of what I would tell you guys uh, to do is to warm up the, the sale, warm up the connection, and then go for the, the very like sunk cost kind of uh, outreach methods, which is a very time intensive uh, outreach method. So that is really the first thing that you want to keep in mind. The second thing is track record. Okay, so I feel like a lot of people get this wrong and they think that if a company is already running Facebook ads, then it is not a good fit. Or if a company is already doing their service, then it is absolutely not worth it to actually reach out to these companies. And unfortunately, I, I feel like there's a lot of people who haven't actually run an agency or haven't actually walked the talk. Uh, they're giving this advice of, you know, don't reach out to, to businesses who are already running Facebook ads. But what I can tell you guys from personal experience is the fact that most of my clients, in fact, I would say around 80, 85%, 90% of my clients, many of them spending quite a lot of budget, they were running Facebook ads, okay? They are investing into the thing we are crushing it for them right now, right? And the reason why I think it's actually easier to sell clients that are already investing into Facebook ads or into the service that you are uh, offering is the fact that they're already actively 
they already see the value in it. Otherwise, they wouldn't be investing it in, into it, right? And not only that, but if you can clearly show them how they're wasting so much money, that is so much more powerful because they're already emotionally and financially invested into it, right? So it's much easier to get someone to take action when they're actively losing money on a daily basis, right? It is much easier, right? Because like they're already investing into it. Why not actually optimize it and make really good returns with it? Whereas if you, for example, are selling the uh, potential and, and power of Facebook ads to someone who hasn't even you know thought about online advertising, sure, you can you know convey the huge opportunity and the huge value that it has, but it's going to be harder simply because they're not investing into it right now, right? And so it, it's, it's a cool thought. It's a cool opportunity. And sure, they can jump into it. And I've had clients jump into it and they weren't running any ads, uh, you know, prior to, to us coming in and, and doing this for them. But... The, you know, there's not that rush. There's not that sense of urgency of like, yes, we need to get this uh, sorted because we're actively losing money on it, right? And so that's what I would tell you guys. You know, take a look at their track record and do not be disheartened by uh, companies that, that are running ads. In fact, I will take a look at their ads. If the ads are not good enough and they, they're clearly spending money on it, they are the perfect prospect. Uh, so that's really the second thing that I want you guys to keep in mind. The next thing is dropping a big thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. YouTube just loves when that thing turns blue and I would really appreciate it. And so go ahead and drop a big thumbs up. And number three is the right balance. And uh, what I'm referring to is size, right? So you want to get a right balance of, yes, you don't want to go for the very, very small companies uh, that, are, that are just starting out simply because you know, unless they have uh, some sort of external investment or uh, they've sold the company and now they're starting a new one, uh, they're not really gonna have the resources to invest into the growth right now, which uh, is unfortunate. And the, you know, some ways that you can get, uh, get around this is charge them a l uh, lower uh, service fee and then you can charge them a percentage of ROAS or a percentage of profit. Uh, that's a good way to get around it, especially if you don't have many clients and you're just you know trying to get a client under your belt um, in, in those initial stages. But really, in most cases, you want to find the right balance where you don't want to go for massive companies simply because they either have an internal marketing team and they're not going to want to get rid of an internal mar marketing team, even if you can get them a greater returns. The huge cost associated to firing all these people and getting rid of the whole team and you know to bring you guys on, on board, even if you can get them incredible returns, that's not gonna happen, right? And it's unfortunate because a lot of big companies, they have marketing teams, quite frankly, are not performing as, as they should be. Um, but that, that, that's just kind of the way it is. The second reason why you wanna find the right balance is because, I've, I've, and I've had this in, in the past, uh, because I was willing to wait because I truly believed in the company, but the sales process for a large company, uh, if you're trying to sign a, a large company, and at this point, my agency is, right? So we tend to go for those bigger clients and we tend to go for a, 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 just a huge retention rate. And that's kind of the way I like to build my agency. I don't like to build the agency on, you know, very small clients that stay on for like three months and that, that's just not my game. But what I will tell you guys is I've had sales process with current clients of ours that took six months, okay? That's just to give you an idea that, that sometimes it just comes down to patience and just sticking around. Um, because most people, quite frankly, they, they even give up in six months within their SMMA journey. And one single deal for us could literally take six months. So that's, that's just to give you an idea of how impatient some people are that get started in the space. Um, but yeah, that, that, that's really what I would tell you guys that if you are going for those bigger clients, then you, you can certainly do so, right? But there's gonna be a lot more vetting, but you're gonna have to stick around for a while until you know the, just everyone from the, the company uh, decides and you know they move forward. Uh, and especially with big companies, you know, sometimes it feels like they're the Titanic. To get them to make a decision and you know take a turn and, uh, and get involved with paid advertising or whatever it is, it takes a while, okay? Um, but yeah, that, that's really what I would tell you guys. If you're going for larger cl clients, the sales process takes to be longer, okay? If you're going for medium-sized companies, I'm, I'm talking you know 11 to 50 employees, uh, then it's not gonna take as long, right? Um, but I will tell you guys to just find the right balance. And I, I think the right balance is between you know, five employees to 50 employees, above 50 employees. You start getting into that realm of them taking a long time to make a decision, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So those are really the three things that I will tell you guys to keep in mind when you are reaching out to clients, when you're doing your prospecting, your lead sourcing for your agency so that you can actually reach out to the people that need your business and actually invest your time into the right places, okay? And that is one of the keys with social media marketing agency and any business model is actually knowing where to put your energy, focus, and attention. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did drop a big thumbs up, it really helps out a ton with the algorithm and I'd really appreciate it. Also leave down below any comments, any questions you may have on this video and I'll be sure to check those out. Um, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, there's so much content coming out. Five videos a week on entrepreneurship and a 360 approach to SMMA with a specific uh, focus on sales, outreach, and e-commerce. So if you wanna check that out, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And lastly, if you haven't joined the free private mentorship community on Facebook, The Client Closers, it's an incredible community full of like-minded people looking to scale their agency and level up in life. So if you wanna check that out, go ahead and check out the link 
in the description. And as always, guys, hope everything's going well in your agency journey, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.